Good afternoon. My name is Laura, and I'm honored to be here tonight along with my colleagues Kevin and Holden. And we're excited to present some of our ideas for expanding upon Connecticut Green Bank's two most successful programs. So the bank's not only accelerating the adoption of clean energy, but is also enabling many of Connecticut's residents to prosper in ways like never before. In light of challenges related to the environment, economics, and social conditions, the bank is truly a beacon of prosperity. And I grew up in a small New England town, so this case really touched a special place in my heart. And it made me think about a lot of the things that make my home so special. You know, the warm, sandy summer days and the salt in the air. The beautiful fall colors that draw attention and envy from people far and wide. And also the beautiful winters. But at the same time, these winters bring immense challenges to many of my fellow New Englanders. Connecticut has the third highest income inequality in the United States. Coupled with energy bills far higher than the national average, this means that far too many have to spend nearly half of their income to pay for energy. Far too many of these people have to choose between heating their homes and paying for things like food and medicine during the harsh New England winters. But this is why we're here today. Our recommendations build upon the Connecticut Green Bank's commitments to innovate, educate, and activate. Our first recommendation is to expand upon the successful Smart E-Loans program by taking it across state lines through an innovative marketing campaign. Our next recommendation is to educate other governments by sharing knowledge and resources through a Green Bank consulting program. And finally, by expanding upon the successful CPACE program, we recommend activating a presence in underrepresented markets in order to ensure a sustainable future for the bank. So the roadmap that we're about to lay out demonstrates how our recommendations will fulfill investment mandates, expand upon social impacts, and accelerate the adoption of clean energy nationwide. The Connecticut Green Bank is the original American Green Bank. Its 2011 founding catalyzed the movement nationwide of green banking. However, this stature did not prevent it from having its coffers, as noted in the case, rated by the Connecticut State Legislature in 2017. This put the bank on its back foot to prepare for the future. It has the opportunity to reorganize itself and prioritize growth and new priorities. To that end, it has created inclusive prosperity capital, an independent but related nonprofit that provides some of the key mission-focused services of the bank at a reduced cost. This is a great start. It's a great step in the right direction. But to help the bank better prepare for its future, we reviewed some of the promising renewable energy technologies that the bank has supported in the past, and we've decided that this is not the time. These are not great sources of revenue, and they are not exactly in the bank's area of expertise. Something that the bank has expertise in would be green bonds, and since these green bonds, their cash flows would be backed by renewable energy, these would be the very definition of sustainable bonds in more than one way. However, market research indicates that institutional investors of the kind that the bank hopes to attract are not interested in paying a green premium. And the projected returns on the bonds are not as competitive as they might be for other products on the bond market. IPC's strategic advantage is in their ability to follow contractors across state lines. Our first recommendation capitalizes upon this through expanding the Smart E-Loan program this is a program that has, you have started in Connecticut, and we believe through innovative marketing can be taken across state lines, which we will address later in the presentation. First, we would like to talk about the Smart E-Loan Advantage. The Smart E-Loan Advantage is this extremely low interest rate that can be offered when compared to other banks whose rates can be as high as 12%. Additionally, the financing and low loan default found with the um, Smart E-Loan Advantage. So, Massachusetts is a prime candidate for expanding the Smart E-Loan program because approximately one-third of the houses still use heating oil for space heating, as well as having some of the highest natural gas and electricity pricing in the United States. The impact that can be made from this is it can increase IPC's revenue as well as giving contractors the ability to expand their businesses and hire more employees 
through having more renewable energy projects, we get res me, results and more renewable energy credits, which can be traded through the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, with directly funding CGB and indirectly funding IPC for a more sustainable future. So how are we going to market this? We would like to market this through an innovative <clears throat> green contractor certification program that educates contractors on legal, logistical, and regulatory aspects of performing tasks across state lines. Upon successful implementation of the green contractor certification program, the contractors that get certified will be given access to the Solarize New England and Energize New England campaigns. Solarize New England is an extension of the successful Solarize CT program and will be run on a similar 20-week model. Upon successful implementation of this program, Energize NE will be implemented for other building energy efficiency projects. So IPC also has the unique opportunity to educate other governments by offering Green Bank Consulting through pro bono and fee-based services. So we would recommend starting off with a modest goal of generating consulting relationships with one government entity outside of Connecticut every year over the next three years with future expansion dependent on proof of this concept. So since the Connecticut Green Bank started the movement, interest in Green Banks has been growing nationally. As we know, states like New York and Hawaii, among others, have already founded their own green banks. But other states like Massachusetts are showing interest, but seeking guidance in developing real, sustainable, viable models. So we believe that IPC can leverage its relationship with the Connecticut Green Bank while also differentiating itself through this model of interstate collaboration. This will allow IPC to further accelerate the green banking movement without, within the United States by leveraging the success of the Connecticut Green Bank, as well as creating its own unique identity. So, what can the Connecticut Green Bank do to activate its full potential in this moment of reorganization? We recommend that the bank expand its successful CPACE program into underrepresented markets. CPACE is one of two uh, programs that the bank offers, the other being CT Solar Loans. CPACE, Commercial Property Assessment for Clean Energy, is the larger of the two programs and does a better job of reaching low to moderate uh, income residents in Connecticut. When we reviewed the performance of CPACE, we noted that the, in the commercial, industrial, and institutional sector, uh, it is below, performing below goal and performing uh, below the other sectors. We also noticed that the leverage ratio is distressingly low in terms of private to public financing. This means that this uh, here the bank is the most exposed to the perils of being financed by public funds. As you can see, uh, the infrastructure and residential sectors are performing over 100%. So we thought that the goals, realistic goals, for the CPACE market expansion would be of 125%. 115% for capital deployment, hopefully doubling the leverage ratio from 4 to 8 to avoid unnecessary risk. So, how are we going to make this happen? Connecticut Green Bank identifies what they call pace setters, which are successful projects in the sector. The sector that we think that the bank should expand into would be hospitality and tourism. This brings in $1.7 billion of tax revenue to the state of Connecticut, but the bank has no connection to this market. So, Mohegan Sun and the uh, Fakwood Resorts Casinos are two of the largest draws in the state of Connecticut. If these were to be considered pace setters, these two largest draws have over 2 million square feet of roof space that could support a solar system with the megawatt capacity of over 30, excluding incentives, rebates, things like this. We, assume, we have estimated that the system would cost about $130 million to construct, returning to a nice fee to the bank, about 7.5 every year, and meanwhile offsetting over 23 tons of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases. The second sector that we advocate the bank expand into would be high-tech manufacturing. This is the third largest sector in the Connecticut's economy. So, for example, the Pace Center could be Pratt & Whitney, their high-tech manufacturing facility, has uh, nearly a million square pair feet of roof space, 13.5 uh, megawatts of capacity, and would set offset nearly 10 tons of greenhouse gases. And our final recommendation would be to leverage the efforts that the bank is making 
by using integrated reporting frameworks, beginning with the most accessible in order to increase transparency and create more um, accountability within the global sustainability movement. So the bank is already impacting nine out of 17 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and we believe that by leveraging this process, you can make your reporting relevant with more stakeholders and, impact, and increase impact on the international level. Now, by expanding upon its most successful programs and offering Green Bank Consulting Services, we believe that the Connecticut Green Bank can assist other governments in helping to close the $47 billion home energy affordability gap that currently burdens millions of American families every year. And New England is the right place to start. So we really look forward to following the continued success of the Connecticut Green Bank and Inclusive Prosperity Capital as your local actions to accelerate the adoption of clean energy scale to realize global impacts that really are making our world more equitable, reliable, and sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Tennessee. Questions? Yeah, Bert. Before getting into questions, I just want to make an observation that I didn't realize um, that there was such a compressed time frame for getting your heads around our entire you know, organization. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, and I think you did a splendid job. Uh, and I'm going to say this to all of you teams. Uh, did a splendid job of getting your heads around it. I want to commend you on, in particular, though, in terms of pointing out uh, a particular lack of penetration into hospitality and, and leisure. It's actually been an area we've tried to crack into, uh, but with limited success thus far. There's some particular reasons for that. It's interesting that you pick Foxwoods uh, uh, or Mohegan Sun, um, and this is something uh, that our financial people at the table would appreciate. There are issues uh, with lending to tribes and, and having that kind of exposure and being able to, because they're a sovereign nation and so forth, that presents um, a particular complication. But I think your thesis is good in terms of, uh, of that. So, but in, in terms of, of the Smart E and the expansion, um, I believe you decided to focus on Massachusetts as the first expansion state. Did you explore the competitive frame there at all? Uh, what meaning looking into Massachusetts and what kind of resistance you might face there? We did. I don't think we have an appendix with information. We looked into areas around the border, and we looked uh, at area. We looked at the concentration of contractors in Connecticut versus the concentration of contractors in Massachusetts. And we thought that since most of the concentration of contractors are in Hartford, they could get easier. It, it would be able to be relatively competitive in Western Mass versus all the contractors that tend to be in Boston area. And we had also found that some of the prices that were being offered by some of the other organizations in Massachusetts were a lot higher than what could be offered by the bank. Um, so seeing that the smarty loans do offer those low interest rates and prices far lower than we could see, we thought the opportunity is still there. Yes, Catherine. Can you talk about um, the financial issues or the outcomes, the economic outcomes that you would expect the bank to see here? As you know, the, the bank was uh, you know, lost a lot of its funding. So how much capital would this require and what do you expect the return on that capital to be? For the smart e-loans? For, for the whole project or you can take one or, one or another as an example. Uh, so for the smart e-loans in particular, um, we did look at the, the uh, projects from 2013 to 2018, how many there were, um, and based off of that we were able to project how many projects we felt could be uh, on this expansion into Massachusetts. Um, we started off a little bit quicker uh, because of the experience that you guys have with these. And then uh, based off that and how much it was per, per project, um, we were able to come up with these numbers based on a lower mid and upper bound using uh, LIBOR, which was, sorry, here, um, a range rate over LIBOR and an origination fee. So that's how we came up with our lower mid and upper bound. Um, and you yeah, have these three numbers at the bottom, the 1.6 million up to 2.5 million is what we would expect out of the smart view loans. And is there capital up front that's required to get to that point? I mean, I... Um, did you 
Well, I was just going to say that um, I think uh, mainly our recommendations could either be taken as a whole or individually. We understand that there were immense challenges um, having to do with um, cash flows. And so we wouldn't expect the bank to take <coughs> all three of these at once, um, but within maybe small pilot projects that could be that could be trialed. Um, and like the really the success of expanding the Smart E-Loan program has to do with having that contractor buy-in. And so we would recommend focusing on creating that contractor certification program first and making sure that those people were actually on board um, in order to take the program across state lines because without them, it's it's a lot more challenging to go across state lines. So the investment in them would be smaller than necessarily the investment of expanding all of our recommendations at once. Time for one more question. Matthew? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, first off, thanks very much, especially the 72 hour turnaround that y'all had. Um, you know, I, I'm curious about the education, the consulting component of this. Um, clearly, the Connecticut Green Bank has, you know, as a first mover and as an organization that's in the game, sort of um, made expertise. But the idea, I'm curious about the politics and feasibility of cross-border consulting from one state to another, acceptability, um, and also sort of the competitive environment um, that, let's say, the Massachusetts Green Bank or you know if any other state decides to do this, why they, why they would turn to pay the Connecticut Green Bank versus a specialist consultant or somebody else in the space who may be um, more in tune to, to their particular local Sure, absolutely. Um, I guess being the original Green Bank in the United States and having the success that the bank has, um, as well as the attention paid to having a social impact, it really goes beyond the returns and it's more about accelerating the movement because we're all here to really accelerate the adoption of clean energy and enabling other states to create those solutions is, is really, you know, what, what's at stake here. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's the angle that we took it at. Um, and in terms of being that, that resource, there are so many incredible programs that are working so well in Connecticut that scaling them into other states um, is possible, um, but it would definitely require a lot of collaboration with those partners. And that's why we would offer the, the mixture of pro bono and fee for service so that there couldn't be any you know, taking advantage of, um, but also you know, not wanting to cross any lines that shouldn't be crossed. Thank you, TC.